and live on YouTube. Okay, it looks like YouTube is only about five seconds behind live, and Facebook is only about ten, uh, eight seconds behind YouTube. That so, be. looks like a great connectivity day. Yay! Keep those fingers crossed. <laughs> I know there was one of these master classes, not with Bridge, but just on the internet. I think I might get it. They're $190, but you know, it's for the whole year for all six or 80 programs and leaders in the industry in many categories, kind of like a creative live, but for the overall industry. And um, one of them is by an astronaut, and the astronaut is saying is that What's the astronaut saying? So the astronaut is saying is that, you know, more or less is that if you're going to be an astronaut, you know, it's not where you have your fingers crossed and take chances. You better know what you're doing. I thought that was really a kind of a prophetic thing he said is that you, know, it's, you don't do it based upon hope. Right. You based on science, technology. But then there are always those of us that are more. Um... Mm -hmm. Shoo away. Shoo. <laughs> okay, let me go back to my corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Hello, Patty. Welcome back. Is YouTube going to be with us today on our chat? No. Did you try it? I did. Rats. Okay. I know. Okay. You'll just have to rely on me to read the comments. Um, speaker was not turned down all the way, I think was part of our problem. For the feedback? Yeah. Yeah, now I don't hear myself as much. Marty Bergen. <gasps> Marty Bergen, Grace Nissler. Hello. Let me um, come Hello. on over. I, we've got a special message from the audience here at Bridge Hands. Wait a second, let's get a view up on the screen here. Okay. He's not going to be looking though, but um, some of the other audience are going to be out there, so... Okay, there we are in front. Go ahead. Alrighty, so we understand that you had a birthday three days ago. So we want to make sure to wish you a belated happy birthday and give you this little message. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> happy Welcome birthday. Marty. Belatedly. 
Uh, thank you very much, and, and thank you for not singing the, the whole song. <laughs> You're welcome. He sounds like some of my bridge buddies. Yeah, he's, like, he's candid. Thank you. Sounds like you. some of my, my critics. <laughs> <laughs> critique. He likes critiques, too, so no biggie. Correct. So is anybody out there on the um, intertubes, Grace? You got anybody coming in on the chat so Patty far? Patty says hello. 16 others are waiting and being a little bashful. Hopefully me saying that doesn't make <laughs> one disappear. <laughs> That's right. So okay, we Hello got, to uh, everybody. Uh, what's that again? I just said hello to everybody. Oh, and he's saying hello to all of you out there. I think they can hear your voice. So we'll be starting up in about another four minutes. So how's the weather out there? And tell us about your COVID-19 experiences on the right coast in Florida. Um, you know, it's scary. And uh, we try to leave the house as uh, little as possible. And when we do, uh, my wife has provided me with 19 steps to do to not get infected or infect anyone else. <laughs> I had to print them out on a list. I put them on cardboard. And when I leave the house, after trying to go through the list to be familiar with it, I carry the list and try to follow every single step. We've got a few people checking The weather is lovely, though. We like good weather. We've got nice weather here today, too, about 81. We've got Paula saying hello from Vancouver. We've hello, got, Paula. Hello, and we've got John from Petaluma, California Big here. Big John, our teacher cruise director, yes. And we've got Tom from the beautiful land of Scotland. Scotland, hey, yes. Well, Grace keeps on one wanting to watch over One from column A and one from column B. Right, hi, <laughs> Pretty Larry. Much. Larry, where, remind us where you're, where you're calling from. Is that uh, the same Larry? Um, Rapsky, Larry Rapsky. Hi, Larry. So we got yeah, we're only seven seconds behind. That's good. Sometimes our delay can be running a half a minute, but I guess the, ah. maybe that's a good sign. Maybe the economy is getting back and everybody's not on the internet today. That, that's right. Larry has reminded me. He is from Windy Shh. City. <laughs> oh, over modulating. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. That was quite a sound effect. <laughs> Windy city. So, yes. Um, so, Larry, I was on Northwestern train one time going from Chicago on a weekend. I was in computer classes and went up to um, where they have bubblers. You know, that is in Wisconsin. They call them bubblers rather drinking fountains, soda pops. And I went back on Sunday uh, back to the Midland Hotel, not too far from the Sears Tower. And uh, I was going to go from the Northwestern train station and walk, and it was the blizzard was blowing. I thought, well, I can make it at six blocks. I'm not a sissy. Um, would you believe this? It, I could not see. And this taxi kept on like going right next to me. And after half a block, I got in. He says, I knew you'd give up. So, Larry, I hope you're having a good spring back there. And look at this. Who yes. else do we have, Grace? We have Hey Cal here from Indonesia, where it's 3 a.m. 3 a.m. in Indonesia. Hoo -hoo. I, I hope that you're not trying to get back to sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Larry is worth staying up for. So good to have you there, Kyle. <laughs> yes, we are more than happy to have Marty with us. So let's see, I've got some of Larry's many books out here that I'm going to kind of promote. And um, I'm trying to think of any other props. I think that's about it. I know, Naomi. You said Larry's book, Mike. Um, I have one of Michael. Larry's and I have like a bunch of Marty's. <laughs> Naomi is joining us from beautiful Pennsylvania. We certainly love Pennsylvania when we were on our Around the United States 90 day tour last year. Hopefully we're going to do it this year. We'll see how it, the um, the virus turns out to be. Yes, Grace. John says that Marty's hand evaluations and slam bidding, his book really helped John a lot. Oh, that's great. Thanks, John, for that feedback. I'm sure Marty will appreciate Thank hearing you, John. that. Make sure to hit those thumbs up if you want to see more Marty on here. We're going to hold them hostage for more thumbs up. <laughs> All right. 
So, 20 seconds and counting. The music is starting to tape out. I love that music. That is Firefly. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. Three, two, one. Green Bridge fans, Michael here at Bridge Hands. Welcome to another day. This is April 24th, is it, Grace? The month is just flying right by, isn't it? It is flying by way too quickly. So today we have something very special for today. We have the one and only Marty Bergen that will be joining us in just a minute. He's listening in, and I'm going to give a little bit of intro before we have him go ahead and take the phone. Uh, Marty is, like I said, his birthday was just um, a couple days ago, the 21st. He's my age, got one on me, so he is definitely an elder that we all should respect. So, as you may know, he is a leading bridge teacher. He's a writer and a player, and he has won many national championships, 10 of them actually, and the American Contract Bridge League grand life master 10,000 points and you have to win some of the big tournaments which he's won many with his playing partner Larry Cohen from well a couple years ago shall we say um, but unlike some who just really get bit by the bug and love to travel see the states and the world Marty has been mostly a homebody he loves to teach and being a leading class bridge teacher is his second claim to fame so um, he has been a writer for the ACBL, the World Bridge Federation, and International Masters. And believe it or not, he was voted 22nd most influential person in the history of bridge. Well, he's certainly one of the top 22, and I'd say the top 10 for me. And uh, so I was going to say, I have some of his books. You know, he started off with the points moints so you can see them there and more points moints and I consumed those very quickly and thank goodness he came out with more and then I would call him and say I want some more and I got the Marty Says volume 2 volume 3 and some of them like the negative doubles um, awesome book you don't see a lot of people that give lessons on those and declare play the Marty Bergen way so um, some of what make Marty um, what he is today is obviously it helps if you happen to be a top bridge player. People listen there for all the tournaments, international and national, that he's won. But more than that is that when you have methods that really add to the game, that um, uh, modern theory, a bridge, because up until about the time when he really got into bridge, as a lot of people were just um, using the scientific method. And Marty really leveraged uh, using the benefits of having big fits or double fits and having some methods there. So certainly a lot of you have heard is disturbing the openers, no trump. And um, the rule of 20 is a for instance, or the Bergen races. Um, Semi-forcing no trump were some of the things that he had. And, um, you know, the other book I have there with his playing partner, Larry Cohen, he kind of adapted some of what Larry did on to bid or not to bid using the law of total tricks. And so uh, they had quite a partnership and uh, they did a lot for the game. And Larry's kind of like, I'd say, Grace and I are maybe more homebodies. So um, some wonder less, but I think he's at the point now where he's there to go ahead and add to the game. And we're going to talk a little bit about what materials he have, um, but I think first we're going to maybe show um, his version of having some of the videos or multimedia types of presentations. We, we know about his books, and he's got, oh gosh, I think um, books and booklets. He's up to almost 70 of those that he's had between 95 and 2018. Uh, he's been, um, his books several times have won the American Bridge Teachers Association, the book of the year, and I could go on and on. But Marty, are you with us there? I am here, Michael. <laughs> okay, so uh, why don't we, before I get started with an actual hand, it shows how you have these uh, multimedia experiences that you use with Howard. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this and where you are now. Um, I got into bridge uh, when I was 14. Uh, I was in the 
hospital for a, a minor thing, and my mother happened to bring me some sports books, which has always been one of my passions, but she also brought me Five Weeks to Winning Bridge, and I devoured it. I read it several times. I got a deck of cards. I probably drove the nurses crazy, <laughs> and that was obviously a long time ago, but I fell in love with the game, and nothing has changed my feelings about it. Um, I will always believe it is the best game there is, and uh, the fact that I'm able to teach it, work with students, um, sure, I played a, a fair amount, um, but did some writing and so on, as you spoke about. Uh, but now I mostly do the teaching. And these online lessons I'm very excited about. Picture, if you would, that if you attended a class, a bridge class, whatever, um, it would be, let's say, two hours. And for the first 50 or so minutes, the teacher would speak and you'd have some sort of handout, and you'd be trying to follow along, possibly taking notes, etc. And then you'd take a little break, and then you'd play some lesson deals on the topic. That's pretty much the way all teachers do live lessons. Well, with my online lessons, okay, the scenario is quite different and much better. Okay, While you're listening to me speak, okay, you're looking at bridge. You're looking the same way as if you were kibitzing somebody playing. Okay? So that can't be beat. And after doing that, and you could stop at any point, you have total control. I speak for a long time, more than two hours, but you can stop me at any point. Um, no one should be forced to listen to me for two consecutive <laughs> hours. I know my wife would stop a long before that. And she says, then, take my husband, please. I, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, in Marty. In addition, okay, let's say the next day or after you listened to some and saw the bridge with all the hands and everything, you were unsure about a couple things. You have a transcript which has every word I said and every bridge hand that I talked about that's there for you to go over anything you want. Okay? And so, but it's interactive. We always give you hands to play, okay? As if you're playing real bridge, okay? Okay, you're the you've done the bidding, you're in four spades. Here's the opening lead, there's the dummy. What would you do? I so have that hand up there right now, Marty. Are not only audio visual, but they are interactive. And another thought, when you, if you bought a book from me and lost it or you lent it to a friend who never returned it, we've all been there before, if you call me up to get another copy of that, I'll sympathize with you, but I'll have to charge you. I'll give you a discount. Whereas with the online lessons, since, since they're electronic and they work on any device, if, God forbid, your computer crashes or... You misplace something because your organization isn't perfect or you get another computer, no problem. You contact us. We say, yep, Joe did buy this lesson, and we send you the lesson again. No price, no questions asked. This was invented by Howard, who works with me. He's the computer expert. I am not. And we think it is the best kind of bridge product out there. Why well, this? You have what I think fifty complete lessons, and this must have taken many years to put together. Yeah, we this this occurred over a eight plus year period, and if you look at the topics, and we'll tell you how you can check out the topics easily, you'll see that they're not theoretical ones; they're practical ones. Okay, um, how to improve your results at Duplicate Bridge. What percentage of bridge players would like to do that? Uh, let's, would you believe 100%? Or how to declare three no Trump, which is the most common contract in bridge. You knew that already. And there's defense and there's bidding. There's competitive bidding. There is bidding without the opponents. You want to practice your Jacoby two no Trump auctions? Okay. It's right there. Okay. 
So we try to be people friendly. And as a teacher, I try to not overemphasize conventions. I think far too many conventions are being taught and played, okay? For intermediate players, conventions like Lebensall, it's just guaranteed to get them in trouble, and you don't need it. Good judgment, that's the name of the game. You know, absolutely, and I think that's the quest that so many of us, I don't know if you went through, but when we're young pups and we think, well, if we know how to cast spells, if we know how to bid these conventions that we hear about or sometimes see the opponent says that we're going to be really good on our conventions. And unfortunately, this um, common sense, knowing how to play, knowing how to do good hand evaluation. I don't know, in your journey, did you find that too? Or um, who is your mentor? Now, you mentioned Bell Root. I'd like you to mention a little bit how he um, and Freddie Scheinwald, for sure, the um, what is it, Weeks to Winning Bridge. So how did Five that fit in your development? Bridge. Okay, well, remember, when I was 14, okay, because I'm no genius, okay, but I do have card sense. In fact, here's a story that I like to tell because it's true. When my wife met me, okay, when we got together and so on, she didn't know anything about bridge, so she found out that I was somewhat well-known in the world of bridge, so she referred to me as her genius. Uh -huh. but, and Lord knows I'm not, to me, to her friends, etc. However, after living together for a while, okay, she quickly saw the real <laughs> Marty, and now she refers to me as her bridge genius. Uh -huh. And I don't have to explain that to anyone. <laughs> so I was lucky that I was born with card sense, bridge I did well with, I was a good player pretty quickly, whereas in other areas of life, okay, I am, among other things, a computer dummy. I have trouble fixing light bulbs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> well, that's where Howard comes in. It sounds like you and he have had a good partnership for many years, so you're the um, the brains of it, and he's the, the hands-on, and so... It sounds like um, besides having these wonderful online lessons is that you continue to sell books and pamphlets. Are, th are those the main things that you would say are your products that you offer? Uh, yes, uh, the online lessons are, you know, the ones that we are um, doing the most of. But I still have my books then the booklets. Um, I also work with people one-to-one. -one. Uh, on the computer or by phone. Um, so a little bit of everything. And, you know, when we take a look at my website, I can just, you know, illustrate how people can find out more about the online lessons and try the free demo, okay? The, you know, how many offers do you get these <laughs> days for something worthwhile that's actually free in 2020? Good. Well, you certainly believe in what you have to offer, give good value, and you trust enough of your product that you're willing to give people a chance to try it. Grace had one thing she wanted to add. Was it a comment by somebody? You're showing that beautiful hand again. So Patty wants to pipe in here, and she is gun ho today with three spades. <laughs> well, we're going to hold on for that, Patty. We're still chatting a little bit, but I do have uh, I've, I've flipped a couple of times, Marty, from the website um, to the order form, just kind of flipping through things and the hand that's there. So. Maybe now is a good time, and we're going to talk more about his different products. But um, how about, Marty, this um, hand, which is called uh, – it's a demo. Other people can try also. He would like to get your email address just so he can be known to you for future offerings. But uh, you can then um, see how this works, how you can play um, online in the simulation. So it's Declare Play Protecting Your Trump Suit. And in this scenario, you have East where they're opening um, with three hearts. And if you had actually gone through and down at the bottom of the screen, I'll kind of describe a little bit more about what goes on there. I think if I hit F11, uh, will that do it? There it is. You see where it says continue, go back, skip, and um, go forward, preferences and help. There's some different options there. And so if you were to click on continue, you would hear his audio. You would hear Marty speak to you a couple of minutes and give a lesson if you were uh, 
down there in Florida in one of his lessons. So, Marty, tell us a little bit after Three Hearts, um, what happens next with the South Hand? They've got um, seven sure. spades. Right. South has a hand where they obviously have to bid spades. Okay. And some of my students say, well, Marty, an overcall to three level, isn't that uh, something that requires more than eight high card points? Yes, an overcall to three level is invariably a hand you would have opened, certainly more than eight high card points. But with those seven spades, and never forget, okay, that although spades and hearts are both major suits, spades is the number one suit because it outranks hearts as well as everything else. So it would be out of the question for South to not bid three spades, worrying perhaps about points, and we all know point schmoint. In oh, fact, yeah. with the South hand, if East on another day opened four hearts and South was vulnerable, you still have to bid four spades. Passing would be an example of what I refer to as scared bridge. So South's going to bid three spades. West has no reason to do anything. And North has a good hand. Okay, Maybe you were thinking that North was planning to use unusual no trump with five diamonds and five clubs. That's a convention that many of my students love to do. But never forget unusual no trump is an overcall and since south is your partner you can't do anything like an unusual no trump bid three no trump would be a hand that wanted to play there okay so the north hand and we call the partner of the overcaller the advancer that's not critical to remember but it's good bridge talk okay so what would I do with the north hand over three spades? Okay, I would bid four diamonds, the higher of my two five-card suits. And it is true that the diamonds are a little bit stronger, although that's not the key. And this response to the overcall over their preempt should be the one time in bridge where a new suit opposite partner's overcall should be forcing. Of course, once North bids four diamonds, South doesn't care what anyone might say the rules dictate. South has a one-track mind. They're going to play this hand in spades. They have an independent suit that, in general, will lose at most one trick, even if partner only has a singleton five. So South's going to bid four spades, and North's going to say, good luck. And that is how I think the auction should go. Wonderful. Um, yes. I'm sure that a lot of people have a lot of thoughts on this, but um, just to kind of a little bit beyond, it won't go through actually the audio of that, but it, um, in essence, if they were to click continue, then they would be hearing commentary and some cards would be played and there would be some choices to be made on what the South Hand should do next. So the South is the declarer, and they're the ones that will be making the decision here is how I recall that this works on your simulation, correct? Right, and as you would imagine, okay, what I just, you know, stated is the same thing that I would state in the, you know, if you listen to the audio, okay, because if you're going to teach about a certain bridge hand, it doesn't matter whether one is on the phone or in a studio, okay, the explanation, um, I'm not saying that when you listen, if you choose to listen to the audio, it'll be word to word for what I just said here. I don't remember the exact words I used, but you would find that what I said here is the same kind of thoughts I expressed when I did this demo lesson eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So these lessons uh, for the hands, and I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you were saying that if it's in the defense, the they would have full hands and there would be um, about 15 of them. Is that about what the number normally runs for these, um, um, the play of the hands? Well, when we do a lesson on declare a play or a lesson on defense, there are 15 deals Okay, where 
you know, it simulates normal bridge. That's the idea here. So you do the bidding looking at one hand as we, you know, we talked about the south hand. Of course, we also were looking at the north hand What for this lesson that we were doing on the phone now. Okay. And now you're in four spades of south. And if this was part of the declare a lesson, okay, as opposed to the demo, when the, the queen of hearts would be the lead that West chose, of course, you as declare, you couldn't see West's hand. You'd see his queen of hearts, and you'd see the dummy. And now the same as if you were playing real bridge, whether online or as you used to do, and hopefully, God willing, you'll be able to do soon enough, is face-to-face bridge. You'd see the dummy, and now you should think about how you're going to play the hand in this four-spade contract. When we do a defense lesson, there are also 15 full deals, and sometimes I'll arrange for you to be west, sometimes you'll be east, and again, you'll during the bidding, you'll only be looking at your hand, whether you're bidding or passing, and then the opening lead will be made, you'll then get to see the dummy, and then I'll be testing your defense, okay? It's exactly like live bridge, okay? No difference, and that's the way it works, and that's the way it should work. Awesome. Grace, you had something, um, as a caller coming in. What is they chatting to us? Yes, Bernice wants to ask, would three spades overcall... I'm sorry, let me start again. Would three spades overcall show more points than four spades right away? Ah, very good question. Okay. One, there are lots of principles or proverbs in bridge, whatever you want, might call them. Okay. And many of them are popular misconceptions. Okay. So sometimes someone say, Marty, my friend told me X. And I'll say, sorry, that's incorrect. And by the way, never forget that whether it's bridge or any other topic, when you get free lessons, you often get exactly what you paid for them. Okay? But one of the principles or slogans that some people may have told you or you may have told others, that's correct. You can't preempt a preempt. But what does that mean? That means that if after East preempted, if South jumped to four spades, that's not a preempt. That's a terrific hand that was too strong to merely bid three spades, which could get passed out. So with the, in order for South to jump correctly to four spades over three hearts, we'd have to add a couple of aces or the equivalent. With the South hand, if South overcalled three spades correctly and everyone passed, South would have no illusions that they missed the game. In fact, if North tabled a very weak hand, South's probably going down in three spades. So do not forget that the right way to play, even though a lot of people don't know it, okay, when an opponent preempts, if you jump, that shows a terrific hand because you can't preempt a preempt. Excellent question. Thank you, Bernice. Great question. Appreciate that. And uh, we won't go through this today, but I know that this hand has about five permutations, depending upon how the plays are by each of the people at the table. And it makes some real challenges for the South hand because it's not a running suit. It's not a bad suit at all. But I recall in your lesson, you talk about what I like to call the counts, inferences, and analysis, and that if the North hand has ace, king, and whether they play the jack and the third or not, is that, you know, that's about all that they're destined to have or they would have opened one heart. So South's perspective, you've talked in your lesson at some detail about how to visualize what cards are being held by the West hand. Did you want to talk to that at all? Well, what I'd like to talk about briefly with this hand is a little bit of what after what will happen in real life. Looking at all four hands, okay, Michael is all four showing to yes. mm -hmm. our good, okay? The queen of hearts would be led. East would overtake with the king, not with the ace, 
cheapest of equals. Okay, why would East overtake? Because East is concerned that their partner might have a singleton. Okay, so East would overtake with the king, cash a high hard a trick two, not critical as to which high one they lead. Everyone follows. East now knows, of course, that there are no more hearts remaining for the other three players. Okay. I, when I use this hand in my classes, the reasoning of the East player for trick three is, well, I don't want to lead a minor around to dummy strength. I don't want to lead a heart, and that would give Declare a rough slough. Ah, oh, that's the worst thing I could do is the thought process of many. So most people with the East hand, in my experience, would lead a trumpet trick three. And notice, now Declare has no problem. Declare will play low, and whether West wins the queen now or later, that's all they're going to get. But what a good East player would say is, here's a principle when there are no tricks remaining in the side suits, side suits being all the suits, not Trump, okay, try to create a trump trick. And there's no problem giving a rough slough. Why were we taught from day one of bridge, don't give a rough slough as a defender? Because it allows Declara to get rid of a loser while trumping in the other hand. But it should be clear to East that Declara has no more losers in diamonds and clubs. Even if Declara is missing the king of clubs, Declara will know that East doesn't have it because that would have given East an opening bid. So the correct defense for East at trick three is to lead another heart, giving a rough slough that's not going to do Declare any good. And this gives Declare a problem. And many of my students, when I use this hand, as I do often, okay, will not do the right thing here. Declare has three options on the third round of hearts, while meanwhile being unhappy to have to deal with that, declarer could do any of these three options. They could throw away a club planning to trump in dummy with the 10. Do you see what happens with that? Now, there's an excellent chance declarer is going to lose two trump tricks to West Board of the Queen 9 now that North parted with an honor. And that is not the right play for declarer. Sometimes the declarers say, well, I'll make sure I'll win the trick, and too many players are grabbers. If anyone ever talk, called me a grabber in bridge, I would be contacting my attorney immediately. <laughs> that is a real put-down. Okay? Is that, declarer, Marty, excuse me, is that worse than a resulter? Um, about... On a par, I would say. Both of them <laughs> insulting terms, bridge-wise. Those are some okay, terms, Marty's. Go ahead, though, Marty's. of resulters out there. Okay. <laughs> so some players would trump with the ace, ensuring they're winning the trick. The problem is that now, once they parted with north-south on one of their four honors, West is now well-positioned to have an excellent chance to win two trump tricks with their nine setting up. So it turns out the correct play, which I believe is counterintuitive to most players, at trick three on the third round of hearts is simply to rough with a low trump in their hand. And now West player has no good options. If they overrough the two with their smallest trump, North will overtrump them with the ten. And if they don't overrough, Declara has merely wasted a small card and still has their four honors intact. So if East defends correctly with the third round of hearts, in order to make the hand without any problem, the Clara must rough with a low trump. And I go through this step by step, as you would expect, and then go on for players who want more to some other possibilities with this deal. Okay, But, you know, for the great majority of players, I believe as a teacher that if they can learn what I just went over, both from East's point of view and South's point of view in the defense and declare a play, I think they will do far better than most of their peers. And I have firsthand evidence of that 
based on the students that I give this hand to year after year, and very few East or South pass the test. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, you know, this week we've been doing on uppercutting, uh, over roughing, and this is kind of just fits right in. I would say a person could spend a good 15 minutes, even half an hour if they want to go through all segments of this. But so for this um, um, cost, and we'll talk about the price of what it costs for a lesson in a little bit, but it sounds like if there's 15 of these, it could easily um, keep you where you'd be learning a lot for several hours. Is that right? Yeah. In fact, we guarantee that in our lessons, whether they're declare or play defense, bidding, Okay, and we do both competitive bidding and constructive bidding where the opponents are passing. So we have four categories for the 50 lessons. We even have a little mini category letting people know which are our most popular lessons, which doesn't mean that they're better than others, but, you know, their peers happen to like them a great deal. And our latest lesson on opening leads, okay, which is one of the most popular, not surprisingly, because that's one topic that occurs on every single deal, as opposed to m as much as you might like Stamen or Jacoby transfers, you don't get those on every deal you play for sure. Okay, So lots of different categories for people to choose from, nice practical topics. Okay, And I always speak for at least two hours, in some cases longer, as I said, you don't have to listen straight through. Nobody would want to. And the transcripts <laughs> of what I'm saying and what I'm going over is always at least 40 pages. Okay, so this is very, very thorough. Okay, when we first came out with this and said that we we're charging $25 for one lesson, okay, we ran across some people saying $25 for one lesson. Okay, well, then when they found out, all that they're getting, along with the guarantee, if any, if you lose it, whatever, you get it back, or watch the following. Let's say you have some technical issues, okay? And, you know, as I can vouch firsthand, computers and cyberspace, et cetera, can be daunting and complicated for me. So you have a technical issue. You contact us, and we guarantee the best support you'll ever get, okay? Not only will we get back to you promptly, but there have been a number of occasions where Howard, who's the technical expert for sure, will even get on the phone and call people up who have a problem. I don't think you get that if you try to deal with the phone company. That is so good. And I think you do. You use the word guarantee. I think you do give a guarantee on your products, don't you? Absolutely. We will replace them. We will support you. We will do, you know, anything you want. We we try to be as people friendly as possible. Okay, that's very important to both of us. Okay, I'm going to go to your webpage, but Grace has got a caller coming in. Grace, yes, what is it? If we could go back to the hand for a moment, John has a question. Okay, go ahead. And this is the last question on this hand. He says, "How do you play the hand with?" S on the L H O. With uh, oh. a spade from L -H -O the L H O means left hand opponent. Right. What was that? What did he say before? Or what did you say, Grace, before L H O? How do you play the hand with spades on the L H O? Oh, in other words, with the spades Spade. showing four, I think is what he means. With spade show, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. I'll, I'll try to rephrase it if I got it right. What John is saying is that so we have seven in the south. There's probably not going to be many in the east. We've got only one in the dummy. So it looks like there could be um, a handful or the better part of it. In west, we would like it to be 3-2. But uh, no, you weren't that nice. That 28% chance is shown up here. So John is saying generally how do you play it? I'm, I'm guessing you're saying it depends on how – East has been playing their cards, but tell me what your thoughts are. No, no. What I, on this hand, when the declarer can't see the opponent's cards, but obviously hopes for a 3-2 split, when East leads the third round of hearts, it is correct for declarer to rough low, and that will be correct whether West has three spades, four spades, or two spades. 
Yeah, so I guess the thought is, is, you know, okay, they've got two tricks and they can't have two more. You know, that's the given. So you take a look at your spades in hand and you have to do the best assessment based on the play of the cards. And I think that answered his question, Grace. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move on unless you have something else that's key. She says no. Well, she's happy. So what I'd like to do is um, go over to your website. And so the website is just what you would think it would be. Marty Bergen, that's B-E-R-G-E-N dot com, M-A-R-T-Y B-E-R-G-E-N dot com. I'm sure if you searched, Googled for Marty Bergen Bridge, you would come right here. But tell us a little bit about your website, about your offerings. Sure. Well, we've got, uh, you know, a num because I have a number of products, we have a, a lot of writing going on, so to speak. Okay. Um, and notice that if you wanted to go get to my website or you wanted to send me an email, okay, that you don't have to memorize my email address, okay, you can, which, there's no secret. It's okay, mbergen at mindspring.com, but who cares? You can remember martybergen.com. Okay, so by going there, there's your opportunity, as you can see, sort of near the top in the middle. Okay, that you can send me an email by clicking there. And if you want to place an order and don't want to trust the secure site that we have. Okay, you can call me. Okay, but the normal way to order an online lesson is to go down the page a bit, and you'll see left of center, but heading down. Okay, where it says click, click here, big letters to order the lesson. Okay, and that's true of all lessons. And if you click on there, you'll go to Howard's website, where there are lots of details, explanations, etc. If, on the other hand, you wanted to order a book or booklet from me, okay, then you could you would go to the left right above the red where it says order online. And if you click on that, you'll go to my store, and there you can order any product you want. And if you have questions about, okay, Marty, you know, can I see a list of all your books or all your booklets, whatever, Okay, you can find it. The information is all there. But I know for myself, and remember, I am a computer dummy, that when I go to a site, I often get confused and frustrated. So you want a list of all of my booklets, a list of all my online lessons, a list of books, whatever. Just send me an email, put your request there, and I will email it to you very happily. Okay, and again... I believe in answering emails promptly. I'm not, I won't necessarily respond to you if you send me something at two in the morning, but for sure you will get a response from me in far less than 24 hours, okay? Anyone who believes in helping people and being people friendly, I can't conceive of doing things any other way. Awesome. That is beautifully said. And um, I just look forward to going to more, some more of these online lessons myself. I think some of us are more visually oriented. We love the teacher and to have that personalization for your lessons and to know is that if we had to, we could email you or have um, a relationship where we can get a little bit more if we're really, really stuck. But um, I guess you would prefer, I guess, the best way so a person can order through your site. Great. If you need to send an email, um, that would be the second preferred way. And worst comes to worst, I guess there's the phone number there. Grace, you had a comment. I do. First, we really want to thank you, Marty, for being here with us. And if you all appreciate this, make sure you hit those thumbs up because the more thumbs up we have, the more opportunity Marty's going to have for people to see and watch this video with us. And Bernice wants right. to say, Marty and Audrey Grant are her bridge heroes. <laughs> well said. They Thank are definitely heroes out there. Thank you very much. Let me just mention one thing on the site that I forgot, um, that right underneath where it was click here to order the lessons, there is the third click here, click here for a free demo of this lesson, okay, 
that demonstrates the format, and it's the hand that we started with, but maybe you want to review it. I would do that if I was you, or maybe you're interested in the other possibilities with this hand, even though they get a little complicated. So just wanted to mention that you can just click here for a free demo, which is the hand you saw, and then at your leisure, you can go through what we did today, or you can keep on going and go through all the more. But we do want people to check out the demos. We hope, of course, that once they do so and like it, they will want to purchase some of the lessons. Okay, and the lessons, by the way, they're $25 each. But if someone wants to get five or more, okay, they get a nice discount of $19 each. And the more they get, the better the discount. And we had a lady this week who ordered all, who didn't know about the lessons in the, in the past. She tried the demo. She liked it. Okay. She heard good things about it from her friends. She ordered all 50 lessons. Okay? She will, while other people are bored during the quarantine, she will not be. <laughs> and we gave her our super duper special, whereas one lesson is $25 each. For buying all 50, we charged her $10 each. Wow. Okay? $10? So 500 and would get all 50 lessons? Are you going to call that the quarantine yep. quad or the quarantine <laughs> right. special? In addition, being very people friendly, okay, if anyone orders two or more, just a measly two or more lessons at one time, I will send them several lesson PDFs, of which I have a million, okay? And some of the people said, Marty, I liked one of your lesson PDFs so much, okay? I find I'm going to that even more often than I go back to your lessons, okay? So trying to give people more than what they thought they were getting. Awesome. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. Jeff Bezos, you know, Amazon, he gives free shipping. Like, do you have your own trucks also? Don't you give free shipping? Um, do not have any trucks. <laughs> and I will give free shipping on large orders, but I confess that if someone buys my books or booklets, okay, that there is a shipping charge, okay? But if Jeff, if any of you know Jeff personally and can work something out, um, he can give me a holler. I'll be happy to talk to him. Awesome. <laughs> Well, um, lastly, one, I'm kind of a little bit of a levity, but um, so you have all these audios, and I'm just kind of curious, um, when your wife, Cheryl, you know, she can't sleep at night, do you just turn on some of your video lessons, and does that help get her to sleep, or what's your thoughts on that? Does she like your lessons? Well, remember, Cheryl is not a bridge player. I know. Grace is right here next to me now on the video also, and yeah. she's like, got a little yeah, like yawning. She's covering her mouth. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel about that, Grace? Um, I think for those of you that relate, I'm very happy for you. For those like Marty's wife and myself, it's good reason to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have our gifts, and Grace also loves technology and the social media and the like. So, But for those of us out there who love bridge, hey, this is it. Marty is the top of his game, and um, if you have any questions uh, be sure to write him uh, go to his website martybergen.com and i think we'll probably see if we can get some kind of partnership where i can have some links to his site we've done that before so marty i think we look forward to working with you more in the future and who knows if it's interesting uh, maybe we can have occasionally have you come on and you can chat about a hand or your philosophy you've done a lot for the game as we've talked about including being a competitive bidder, you know, your week twos kind of rattled up the ACBL and bridge, making them change actually some of the ACBL laws. So in closing, do you want to say anything about that? Sure, that uh, you must, if you want to do well in bridge, as everybody in the world who plays bridge would like to, you must not be afraid, okay, too many players worry too much about sins of commission, mm -hmm. and they miss the boat, okay? Whereas it would bother me terribly to just sit and pass because 
oh my goodness, I'm vulnerable, or gee, my suit isn't good, as good as it like I'd like it to be, etc. Sins of omission are equally bad. Okay, so you must be aggressive. I'm not talking about bidding slam all the time. That's not the key to duplicate bridge. The key is to be very aggressive competitively. And how often has the following happened? Okay, you look at a nice diamond suit and your partner's on lead against some contract and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I sure wish my partner would lead a diamond. But if you never bid the suit, how is partner going to know that? So you want a diamond lead? Bid diamonds. So, for example, if I was the dealer with neither side vulnerable and I had five diamonds to the ace-queen-jack and nothing else, okay, I would be thinking, A, I'm desperate for a diamond lead. B, the, my hand is weak, so the opponents probably have the good cards. I'm not going to just sit here and watch them do their thing. I'm going to make life tough for them. Okay, just like when I played competitive tennis, I would try to hit the ball where my opponent wasn't, obviously. <laughs> so I would open two diamonds on my five to the ace, queen, jack. That will ensure I get a diamond lead. That will ensure that the opponents will not have an, as easy a time as if I passed. And this kind of aggressive bidding is the only way to go. And by the way, it's a lot more fun. I, ne I don't always do well, but I never, after an afternoon or evening of bridge, say, boy, I was really bored today. I had lousy cards. I just passed too often. I really wasted my time because I'm always in there bidding, even with the weak hands. Okay? So as far as I'm concerned, there's no such. I played God knows how many thousands of sessions of bridge. I've never been bored When I have bad cards, I find a way to throw in bids and help my partner lead rather than, oh, gee, I wish he would know what I had. Yeah, they say mimicking is the most sincerest form of flattery. And when you came up with your Bergen bids, it wasn't a blink of an eye later that Max Hardy had his Hardy raises, which was on the same exact concept. And then, I mean, even like the um, Obar, opponents bid and raise, And we know that in the pass out seat, if they haven't got to two of the major, you want to come in the auction. And I don't know if I ever saw it in any of your books, but I know that in your partner, Larry, when he learned some of these principles that from he, that from you, that is, is that um, balancing in the direct seat. And the first time I saw that, Obar bids, bids, balance in the direct seat. So you've come up with a lot of concepts to actually have ways to bid more with less the going back to the points points but I thank you for all you've offered to the game and um, particularly now that you're giving back so much to the rest of us at very affordable prices so uh, my high praise to Marty to um, Howard and Grayson you've been waiting a long time with our I've been waiting. lips flapping I, what did you I, want to I've say I've been waiting and waiting very patiently Larry has asked a question here Marty a request for you Oh, I know what that is. I saw that one. <laughs> Marty, do you know Happy Trails? You know, do this I is know some Happy like Trails. Roy I'm Rogers, you know, the song, Happy Trails to you. you wouldn't want me to sing it. <laughs> oh, oh well, just a little bit. Well, we just want that He can accompany us if he wants to, mm -hmm. but Marty, thanks so much for being here today. I'll call you back and we'll chat a little bit more after the call. But for everybody else, I think we're going to wrap it up here. It's been a good 45 minutes plus. So thank you for being here today. Uh, more next week. And for those of you that are the members for a premium or ultra on Sunday, we're going to have a lesson on defense. So that will be at one o'clock California time. Until then, Grace, you know what to do next. Let's close it out. And I don't know if Marty's going to join us or not. If he's wise, he won't. But here we go. <laughs> Happy trails to you until we meet again. Thanks, all. Have a Bye. great day. Happy trails. Peace out. Bye for Thank now. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Have hey. a great day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye.